It actually gives me anxiety to look at this. Any minute now, my umbrella's flipping inside out. I just know it. Look at her little face. Oh, I can't even think about it. It makes me feel ill. Because I actually really like my outfit today. It feels like progress. I don't really sit and deep it too much because it'll probably make me spiral. I haven't actually mentioned this anywhere online because I don't feel like it's my news to share. But why did I think renovation was a good idea? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another weekly vlog. I've actually got a new camera, so I don't know if this is looking any different. I haven't even really tested the sound yet, so I don't know what it sounds like. I'm also very aware of the fact that I'm in my house right now and it's very echoey. So I'm hoping the audio is okay. I'm gonna test out this camera this week. So far, I'm very impressed with it. It is so nimble. Is that the right word? It's the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. As you can see, it's got a much wider lens than my previous vlog camera. It's also just tiny like it's gonna be so much better for carrying and vlogging out and about so much more discreet anyway let me know what you think during this vlog of the quality and stuff like that it's Monday morning and I'm round at the house because I actually haven't got anyone in here today I thought I would give you some home updates because quite a lot's been happening and I've got the electrician coming back in tomorrow so I wanted to come round, brush the floors, hoover. There's literally like cobwebs on the walls and stuff downstairs. So just make it a lot nicer for him to work in basically. But let me update you on what's been done. I'm very much still getting used to this camera. And also the screen is below the camera now. So I've got to try and remember to look at you guys rather than to look down here. So upstairs in the house, the main bedroom, I can actually flip the camera around. Ready for this? Oh my God, how fancy is that? It's got a little gimbal. So this is the main bedroom and this is painted in the color Timeless by Dulux. It looks so lovely and fresh. The ceiling's been done. The ceiling rose has been done too. Obviously the light isn't up yet. Let's see if the camera will follow me around. I think it will. Oh my God, isn't that so sick? Right, anyway, the plan for this wall is to panel it to about here. I'll put a picture on the screen of the styles we like and then do this bottom half of like the panelling in some kind of green. I don't know if we've found the perfect green yet. We have found one that we like called Botanical Beauty from Valspa, but I don't know if it needs to be a bit of a darker green. And then if I take you into the front of the house, this has also been painted. So this is my office. I can't remember how much of this I've shown in the vlogs, um, but this is painted in the color Summer Linen by Dulux. I absolutely love this color. I actually think I want some of this downstairs, which wasn't the plan. I just love it so much. Although this wall over here, as you can see, still needs plastering. The plasterer is coming in mid-March. So then that will be done. This wall can be painted. And then I'm gonna do some paneling in here as well, just because I'm excited about the prospect of paneling, to be honest. Moving in to bedroom number three. This one is my boyfriend's office. And this one's painted in the color White Mist by Dulux. This one is done for the painting for now. Although on here, we are gonna be, let's see if I can move the camera down. Here we go, it's following my face. This little box above the stairs is going to be built up into a cupboard, so that's been done, I think, the beginning of March. Just because right now this is such a waste of space. But yeah, I really like this colour. It's kind of like a very light grey, I would say. Like I said, it's called white mist, so it isn't off-white, but it's a bit of a cooler off-white. I think as well because this room is north facing, this is something I saw online, north facing rooms tend to be a little bit cooler anyway and then south facing rooms are a bit warmer which is why the timeless I think looks a little bit more yellow than in other places and this looks a bit more grey and cool toned than it would do like say if you swap the two colours round they would look very different. You guys are not ready for the bathroom though, honestly. It actually gives me anxiety to look at this. Are you ready? I'm going to flip you round in three two holy moly so obviously everything's been ripped out all the tiles are gone all the furniture is gone all the pipe work is gone and the ceiling is gone too <laughs> oh that looks so spooky up there i don't even want to look up there too long that's the loft up there basically there were actually three layers of ceiling that were found in here and a layer of lino like floor lino so yeah, that's all been ripped down and you can actually see that we're gonna gain a little bit of extra height in here because of those three ceilings. So like the ceiling was on the 
this bottom line is now going to be on this top line so we're not gaining much but when you're in the shower that is actually quite a significant amount to gain this is just the room that looks very overwhelming well one of them anyway but the electrician's coming in tomorrow to sort this out and then once the electrician's been in the plumber's coming in and then the plasterer is coming in then the electrician comes back in to like fit the light sockets and stuff light sockets is that what they're called i don't even know and then finally the decorator comes back in once all the plastering and stuff is done and he finishes off all the little jobs so for example like you can see round the window in the bedroom it's got a gap we're obviously like where we've de-wallpapered and scraped all the silicone edging has come off so yeah he's gonna redo all of that the decorator also did one layer of egyptian cotton out here just so we can see what it looks like compared to the other rooms so this one is summer linen this is egyptian cotton and this is white mist and i do really like the way they all look together egyptian cotton is a little bit darker than i thought it was ignore obviously how patchy it is it's because there's only one coat so far but also this little area of the house i'm very aware is quite an enclosed space so i think when it's like on this wall, for example, that's actually a little patch of it. I think it's gonna look a lot lighter. The plan is to carry this color all the way down the stairs. Let's go down actually and have a look. So it'll be all the way along here. I wanna do paneling all along here as well. It will be, oh my God, look how grubby that wall looks. Oh no, it's because it's been sanded and filled. That's why it looks grubby. And here, the walls have been prepared to be painted. Just haven't got that far yet because there's no point painting all this and then having the bathroom redone because it's just gonna get wrecked. Cannot wait to rip this carpet up as well. So the Egyptian cotton's coming down this wall. It will be all in here, ignore the amount of chaos going on down here currently. But then I think out in the kitchen, I wanna switch to summer linen. I was thinking about it this morning. Literally all of these walls have been prepped, which is why they look so horrific just wanted to put that out there definitely not finished walls like oh they've been sanded it was so dusty in here in fact pretty much everything is dusty which is another reason i've come around today but i think i want to take the egyptian cotton where do i stop it though because i know i want this wall lighter i feel like i'm really rambling i'm so sorry but you guys actually were so helpful when i last spoke about house stuff so if egyptian cotton is in the lounge so it's on this wall it's on this wall would you change it to the lighter color here or would you change it here let me know inwards corner or outwards corner where would you switch the color because obviously then this wall this is part of the kitchen so if the kitchen is like a square do you know what i mean so i think all of that needs to be summer linen so change it on the outer corner or is that going to look weird yeah please let me know inner corner or outer corner where would you make the color change oh yeah forgot to mention ceiling's gone up here as well why did i think renovation was a good idea this is terrifying i think i may have shown that in a previous vlog but i haven't shown the fact that all the flooring is now gone and this is what the laundry looks like so yeah all the kitchen tiles have come up all the laundry tiles have come up all the downstairs toilet tiles are up the only things left in are these two purely for the sake of builders that are in and out the amount of cobwebs and stuff this is what i'm going to brush down today and hoover and get gone because it is gross look at the amount of like rubble and stuff down here oh my god i'm not gonna lie it is a bit scary i'm excited i just found these in the garage samples of egyptian cotton and summer linen so let's test them i think i definitely want summer linen on this wall and the rest of the kitchen i just feel like it's gonna go with the gray kitchen better and if i go by the tiktok theory i saw the kitchen is south facing, so it's gonna be a little bit of a warmer tone. So I think Egyptian cotton could actually look too yellow compared to the pale gray kitchen cupboards. Okay, I think I know guys, but I still wanna hear your opinions. So this is summer linen. This is Egyptian cotton. I think that's the place to change it because then this is all summer linen. This is all summer linen. All round here, summer linen, summer linen, summer linen. So like it's kind of a square room, you know, of summer linen. And then through here, Egyptian cotton. And all that room's Egyptian cotton. What do you think? I thought it might look weird changing it on the outwards corner, but I actually don't think it will. I think it'll be all right. I'm just thinking my thoughts out loud, basically. My brain is so full, I need to get it out. <laughs> This is so gross and dusty. This is why my hair is so greasy because I was gonna wash it last night and I thought, Han, big mistake.
What is that? <laughs> I'm just testing out the low light setting on this camera with Sunny. Look, watch, it's going to spin round. Ready? Oh, it looks a bit like Wally, this camera. Let me film it as it moves, so I'll show you what she's looking at. Ready? Whoa. Isn't that cool? This is on the normal setting, so not the low light one. I'm just filming this for my own good to compare the two. Wednesday and I'm heading into London today. I've actually got a meeting with my management. Really looking forward to seeing them. I haven't seen them for quite a while. Well, I saw Evie at the um, YouTube job a few weeks ago, but I haven't seen everyone else for a while. So it should be a really nice catch up. They basically do like, they call it a strategy meeting at the beginning of every year. It's usually in January, but they've just been so busy that mine has fallen in February, but that's fine because my January was really busy as well. And we basically just go through, like, let me move this, like brands that I would like to work with this year, content plans, what I've got planned, what they've got planned. It's just like a big old catch up really. Anything they have in the pipeline, anything I have in the pipeline, I'll reiterate to them that obviously I'm doing house reno at the moment and then I'm gonna be moving out. So definitely keen to work with like homeware brands and stuff like that. I feel like when I move out, my channel won't change, but I think I will find it a lot easier to film and I'll also have a lot more to film. and it does kind of open the doors with more brands because I live at home with my parents I'm very aware of the fact that this isn't my house like a lot of homeware brands obviously it makes sense if you are the homeowner so yeah I'm really excited for that and the prospect of that and that potential because I also am obsessed with all things homeware like home decor cleaning products I cannot wait to do clean with me videos not just on YouTube but like on TikTok as well I love a clean with me like a speed clean or a one hour clean oh my gosh just obsessed I'm so excited to do that but we're a long way off that obviously as you saw in the last clip but the electrician was in yesterday and he's also in today and I am so glad that he's come around he's one of those electricians that does everything really properly because he signs everything off at the end so he ensures my house so if anything goes wrong or if anything like goes bang he would be liable for it so obviously he doesn't want that to happen so he makes sure that everything is really super safe and with the kitchen ceiling being down at the minute you can see all the electrics like within the flooring and within the ceiling and a lot of it he found was very unsafe I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's probably boring but even in the kitchen walls he tugged a wire and it came out the wall and it had loads of black tape on it basically making two wires into one with just loads of black tape around the middle like that was bound to go bang eventually and it was also behind the hob so once the kitchen was in the splashback would have gone up it would have gone bang and the whole kitchen would have had to be ripped out so yeah i feel like the electrics and the plumbing are two things which are expensive but they are so worth spending the money on because it just makes the house safe and when you buy an older property it's just a case of fixing other people's DIY and like botched jobs that have happened over the years again and again and again. So there's just so many electrics in there that people have just attempted to fix, but not really. So it's basically all being ripped out and rewired and redone. But yeah, it's a bit of a bigger job than we initially thought it was gonna be, but one of those things that's so worth spending the money on. Anyway, I am just getting ready. Then I'm gonna have some breakfast and leave. I've got to leave here at just after 11 and it's half 10 and my camera battery is flashing so luckily this camera charges really quickly so I'm going to put it on charge and take it with me I'm really excited to take it out for the first time take it into London before I go guys I just want to quickly show you my outfit because I actually really like my outfit today so this jumper is from New Look I believe the brand is called I think it's blue vanilla or something like that 
And then this jacket is a new purchase and I absolutely love it. I've worn it so many times already. It's one of those like staple jackets that goes with so many vibes of outfit. I got it on ASOS, but it's from Abercrombie and Fitch. It was, I think it was 90 pounds. So it's definitely not a cheap jacket, but I know I'm gonna wear it. I mean, I've already worn it so much. This bag is from Boohoo. I'm using this one today because it fits one, my camera in this, my little camera case, my phone and an umbrella because it's pouring outside with rain. These jeans are from, I wanna say Zara. I think they're from Zara. They're the ones that I cut the bottoms off because they were too long. And then my shoes are New Balance and that's my outfit. I really like it. It's pretty simple, but it's warm. And with the umbrella, I'm gonna stay nice and dry fingers crossed which is also the reason why I just straightened my hair today I thought I'm not going to go for the curly blow dry look because it's just going to look naff in the rain by the time I arrived anyway let's go up and leave take a lot of courage just to live out your dreams bigger picture I could see if I just close my eyes have the foresight to My umbrella is fighting for its life right now. I don't even know if you can hear me. But on the plus side, I am loving it using this camera. It's so much more discreet than my G7X. And I feel like, because it doesn't look like a camera, no one's really looking at me. I would never usually just vlog out and about like this on my own because it's terrifying. Oh my God, the weather is so horrific. I actually don't know where I'm going either, but I can't hold my umbrella, my camera, and my phone for Google Maps all at the same time so I've sacrificed the Google Maps which is probably not my greatest idea thinking about it any minute now my umbrella's flipping inside out I just know it so I'm vlogging but I'm talking to you just flip it round how insane is that? Hi guys, I'm back. I'm home with my sunny bear. It's about, I think it's like half three-ish. But it was really nice going into London today. Even though it was such a miserable day, it's nice to just go in and come out. Like, usually if I'm going into London, I'll try and make a bit of a day of it or I'll go and, I don't know, at least look in Primark down Oxford Street because why wouldn't you while you're there? But I actually didn't today because I knew I just wanted to get back and I've got a lot to edit tonight as well. So I wanted to get back to my sunny we're now waiting for my mum she's just gone into asda just to get a few bits but sunny always gets so excited when she picks me up from the station it's the cutest thing in the world as i walk down the ramp at the station the ramp like zigzags and i can see her at the bottom and she spots me at the top but then obviously i've got to walk away from her to come back to her and she doesn't understand that every single time i can see her looking at me thinking where are you going and she's like squeaking and squealing and everyone around me starts laughing because she just looks literally like she's been stolen it's like my mum's taken her from someone she's that she's not even distressed it's excited yeah i don't know if you could hear me when i was walking down oxford street but this camera life-changing i'm really hoping that you guys like how it looks i think i've still got to get used to the settings and the color grading because it's a little bit different to the g7x i feel like it's not as saturated but generally speaking i hope you like it because it's so much easier to use out and about maybe i'll switch it up if you're not keen maybe i'll use like the g7x at home and then this one out and about i just know that i'll vlog out of the house way more with this one and i think it'll make the vlogs more interesting can honey have kisses oh Thank you. I've missed your little kisses today. I'm the craziest dog mum in the world. <laughs> She's watching the camera. Sunny, what's that? Ooh. Oh, distracted. Another thing that would be very helpful if you could let me know. I've been thinking about this on the train. So for vlog titles, do you prefer a vlog title like I usually do? Like some of my recent ones, my fave vlog, but the most embarrassing moment ever. Disappointing house news and I need help. Childhood memories and a secret meeting. Or do you prefer a vlog title that says what's in the vlog? So for example, Primark haul, house updates and a trip to London. Do you know what I mean? Like less emotion more 
what's actually included in the vlog or do you prefer the vlogs with a bit of emotion let me know does that make sense i feel like that makes sense in my head but yeah i'd appreciate your feedback on that one please because i've been watching a lot of people lately whose titles say what's in the vlog which feels less creative but maybe that's more helpful for the viewer what do you think sunny what do you prefer i don't care mum i just want to be in them happy thursday everyone it is the most rainy miserable day today but i'm not gonna lie i love days like this sunny's barking at the door she can hear me talking she's got this new thing where she wants to look out of my office window because i put her up here the other day and now she's obsessed no don't drink my tea my love sunny that is not the most convenient place for you to sit oh the birth how rude she went for a groom this morning so she's not very happy with me because i dropped her off what do you think you're looking at anyway i thought i would do a little q a for this section of the vlog because it feels like a really long time since me and you guys have had a catch up i know that does sound a bit silly because i film my life every week but i don't know sometimes you guys have questions for me so i'm going to answer some of your questions your burning questions on instagram quite a lot about the house reno obviously because that's such a huge part of my life right now not gonna lie i'm really enjoying it but i'm also really looking forward to when i don't have to think about the house anymore and it's just done because honestly it is so all consuming for your mind i definitely underestimated how much work goes into a house reno which again probably sounds ridiculous because looking back now it is quite obvious but there was genuinely a time where i thought oh a lick of paint some new floors i was just thinking about the decorative part i wasn't thinking about structural part of the house the first question is what has been the biggest surprise with the reno there's definitely been a few but i would say the biggest surprise was the cost of the extension if you watch my vlogs regularly you probably know that i was looking into extending the back of the house only out two meters and across three meters so it wasn't a big extension and I had, I think, four builders round and the quotes were over £30,000. I don't know if I'm just naive, but I did not think it was gonna be that much. I thought like 15 to 17, maybe 20 max, but it was like 30 plus, which is just way too much money to justify. The cost of everything has surprised me, to be honest, which leads me on to the next question, which is how much is your house renovation costing? Well. You tell me. I don't know how much it's going to cost in total by the end of it, but I can tell you that so far... God, I should probably add this up. I have got a note in my phone of all my house costs. So every time I'm paying a builder, this is a big tip actually, every time you pay someone, whether it's card, cash, via the pigeons, I don't care, write it down because there's going to be a day when you'll look back and you'll wonder how much you've actually spent on the house. I've spent £220 alone in just getting the rubbish cleared away from the ceilings, the old bathroom, the tiled flooring. The electric work that I've had done for the past two days has cost me £620. The paint samples alone for the colours, £48. The decorator for three weeks of work, about £2,300. Should I add this up actually? This is probably handy for me to know at this stage how much it's cost, but I don't want it to come across Cross. I don't know, I just worry about talking about money sometimes. I'm gonna add up everything I've spent on the house since I got the keys. Bearing in mind I've had the house for two years, so I had spent money on it before that, but since I got the keys, let's work that out. Kind of wish I hadn't done that, but it's helpful. So since I got the keys, this isn't including stuff. So like things we've bought, the ironing board, the kitchen utensils, not including any of that. This is just building work on the house. I've paid £7,009 and 23p to be exact and the house still looks like an empty shell but I just had to remind myself that this is what I've been saving for my entire life is having a house. Since I started making money from YouTube when I was I'm gonna say about 17, every month when I've been paid in the back of my mind I've had this is going towards a house one day. Now that it's at that stage and I'm actually paying for things is terrifying. Yeah £7,000 on building work. And there's no ceilings in some of the rooms. I'm just excited for the nice bit to start. The decorating, the buying the sofas, the dining table, the vases, the fake flowers. Bring on that phase. How are you feeling about moving out of your family home? Well, I'm still not looking forward to leaving my mum, but I don't want you to take that in the way that I'm not looking forward to moving out. I am looking forward to having that chapter of my life. I'm really excited for that. I'm really excited to have my space, go about my daily life, 
as an independent adult. Obviously my boyfriend's gonna be living there as well, but to kind of like start this next chapter, I'm excited for. To leave my mum and dad, not looking forward to that. I kind of wish I could have the best of both worlds, but the world just doesn't work like that. And you do have to grow up eventually. Um, so yeah, it's like bittersweet. I'm just so close to my mum. We literally spend every day together. I think because I'm self-employed, I work from home. And then when I'm at the office, my mum works with me. We're like the best of friends. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be difficult. I'm still gonna see her every day because we're still gonna work at the office together every day. But the further along that the house rent I get, the less I dread it, weirdly enough, because it's kind of starting to feel more like my home instead of just like this random house. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone else, but I'm not good with change. I have to give myself time to get used to things. I've always been that way as well. If you spring change upon me, absolute panic, meltdown will occur, which is another reason why I wanted to buy the house and not move into it for a while because it gave me time to get used to the idea. That probably sounds really silly to some people, but I feel like some people watching this will get that. My answer to your question, mixed feelings. Oh, this is a good question. I've never had this before. For. So this one says, what's the favorite parts of your life at the minute versus some of the things you're struggling with right now? I like it. My favorite part of my life right now. I haven't actually mentioned this anywhere online because I don't feel like it's my news to share, but a couple of weeks ago, I did become an auntie. So I have a little nephew now, which is just even better than I could possibly imagine. Like the love that I have for this baby is unbelievable. And I've only spent a couple of evenings with him so far, but just in general, the family time and like the vibes of the household since he's been born, it just feels like we've all kind of got a new lease of life and like a new, not to say a new reason, but it does kind of feel like that. Like everything we think about now includes this little baby and the summer we include him in our plans and just everything feels lovely and he's the first baby of our family as well like he's the first of this next generation so everyone's very excited about that so yeah being an auntie is definitely my favorite part of my life right now something i'm struggling with i'm kind of struggling with balancing everything i don't really sit and deep it too much because it probably make me spiral but i'm absolutely loving youtube and content creating right now and obviously running Sunnyside as well, both of those things could easily be a full-time job. So sometimes I do find that I spread myself a little bit too thin and because I've been focusing more on YouTube and content creation and TikTok and Instagram, all things like that, I found that Sunnyside has taken a bit of a back seat, which means less Instagram posts, which directly affects the amount of sales I have, which directly affects my motivation towards the business. I still absolutely love running Sunnyside. I just haven't had the brain capacity. It's definitely the thing that's had the least of my attention. So yeah, that kind of worries me because I don't want to lose Sunnyside and I don't want it to stop. I definitely want to pick it back up. And I think once the house is done and I'm in the house, I'm going to find that a lot easier to give that more time and more energy. Do you have any holiday plans? Um, yes, so I'm actually going to Amsterdam in April with my boyfriend. We're going for four nights. I'm really looking forward to that. We're going to do all the touristy things. We're going to go to the Tulip Fields, which is why I wanted to go in the spring. We're going to go to the Anne Frank house. And then in August, I'm going to Germany with my mum. Not on holiday, it's just one night, but it's to go and see Adele. And honestly, ridiculously excited for that. Those are the only things that I've got booked so far, but my boyfriend and I would also, we'd love to go to Centre Parks this year with our friends in the summer. Him and his friends have all been to Centre Parks, but I've never been and I would love to go. So hopefully that's on the agenda. And then I think we would wanna try and do some kind of Christmas market, maybe like Belgium or a German Christmas market. We'll see. We've kind of said that this year is like mostly for the house and moving out, cause obviously it's very expensive to do that. And then next year we'll look more into like some proper holidays, you know, but for this year like weekends away we're more than happy with that would you ever host your own podcast do you know what never say never but it's not on the agenda right now i don't know if, if i created a podcast what would i make it about do you know what i think i would do but my best friend alice has actually just done this she's created a podcast where she interviews creative people like self-employed people or illustrators, other graphic designers. She's got YouTubers on as well. Her first episode actually just came out and I was on it. So I'll leave a link in the description down below if you wanna go and listen to it. We had such a like candid, nice chat, but I just think it's such a good idea. It's kind of like being a fly on the wall to mine and Alice's conversation about our jobs and like about how we actually find it and the behind the scenes of our jobs. And she's filmed eight episodes now. They're coming out every Wednesday at four o'clock and I'm so excited to listen to all of those episodes because she has some great people lined up. Let me tell you that so yeah i think if i were ever to start my own podcast not that i think i will 
I think that's a great idea to do that. There are so many things I could talk about all day long. I could talk about dogs. I could talk about food. I could talk about Mama June. <laughs> These are all podcasts that I could have multiple series of. I could talk about the topic of family vloggers. I could talk about YouTube in general. In fact, maybe keep your eyes peeled for that one. And the last question for today is, have you hired a 3D designer for your house? I am flattered because no, I haven't. I've just been doing the 3D designs on my laptop. I use Photoshop for them. So I will like take a photo of the bathroom. I'll put an example on screen in case you've not seen it. If you haven't seen it, go and follow my home Instagram account. It's called Homes Under the Hannah with an extra H. So I'll take a picture of the bathroom, just like this one. And then I just kind of like, I've taught myself how to Photoshop it into a 3D design. It's definitely not the best. Like if you zoomed in, you would find faults, but I can transform it from a photo like this to a 3D design like this, which has actually been so handy. If anyone would like their bedroom 3D designed, I am not offering myself out to those services. Honestly, just teach yourself on Photoshop. It's easier than you think it's gonna be. Take it's a lot of time but it's satisfying what did i do last week oh the garden look at this garden before and after how much better does that look don't zoom into the tiles like i say i'm not the best at it but just the whole color scheme the patio laid down oh i think it's just gonna look so much better when that's done my god i'm amazed that my tea is still warm because i've been talking for 26 minutes but yeah those are some of the questions that you guys asked over on instagram i'm so sorry if i didn't get around to answering yours this time but I've been talking for way too long. Yeah, I'm gonna sit and drink this cuppa and then I'm gonna head up to the office this afternoon, pack the outstanding orders, come back, edit this vlog. No rest for the wicked. Okay, I've just come up to the office. I'm aware this is not the most flattering angle in the world. It's so cold in here today though. Oh, my camera is strobing. That's an issue we need to sort out. Oh, never mind. she impressed me. Um, yeah, it's so cold up here today. I've put the heating on literally as soon as I've come in. Still feels so weird to me that I don't need to like stay in front of the camera over here i can like move around and it just follows me i'm excited to use this face tracking feature while i'm picking the orders downstairs though because it will literally follow me around as i'm picking everything look who's had a groom this morning her little fur is so much shorter but it's so much better for it so much more comfortable she's a bit scared of this camera still because it moves by itself <laughs> i just tried to film her the other way around she was having none of it but i think she feels better if i sit with her but yeah it's so sad because sunny's groomer is actually stopping grooming i don't know if i've said that but she's going to a new groomer in april and i'm literally so worried about it i know that probably sounds so dramatic but having to trust someone that i don't know with sunny literally fills me with fear and she's been going to her current groomer for like almost four years now. She's the only groomer she's ever had. It's not even that I'm worried about what she's gonna look like with a new groomer. It's just that I hope they're nice to her. I don't know. Oh, I can't even think about it. It makes me feel ill. But look how sweet she looks. Wow. So you can see me in 4K now with mum's new camera. You guys are so lucky. Ah, uh, that's so... Not my mouth. Not my mouth. That's so kind. Kisses? Oh, thank you. Sometimes life can be tough And you feel like you just had enough I'm looking so rough today. Not only am I looking rough, but I'm looking rough in 4K. <laughs> that is horrific. Um, anyway, I'm round at the house, so I thought while I'm here, I might as well do a little house update because I wanted to do a little bit of cleaning, which I know sounds stupid. It probably is stupid because we're like halfway through the work. But I just think if you keep on top of the dust as much as you can, it doesn't make the problem as big. So yeah, I wanted to kind of like damp dust because it was at a stage where you walk into the house and it was like kind of walking into a mist. It was that dusty because obviously ceilings have been down, all the walls have been sanded. It was gross, but it's feeling a whole lot better. So I thought I would show you what the electrician did this week. Oh, and I also did this, which I thought was genius. So obviously I'm going up to Doncaster tomorrow to choose the kitchen. And these are my paint samples. So I thought if I do it on plain white paper, it's pretty accurate of what they're actually gonna look like. And then I can take this with me and compare it to the kitchen cupboards. Is that not really smart? 
I'm also going to see if they have some samples of like cupboard doors that I can bring away with me and bring home because I want to see them in the light of the house. So the electric work. I know it doesn't look like much, but there was such a chaos of wires over here. I also printed these out for the electrician and he said it was so handy to work from these. This is like the DIY kitchens template and then he put it on its side to work from. But then I put like a code and I put where I wanted the spotlights where I wanted the extra plugs, where I wanted the feature light and stuff like that. Um, so he's put the wiring in for all of those, which are these gray wires. So these are for the spotlights down here. So I've got six spotlights and then this one hanging down here, this little blue wire, this is for the pendant light, which will go over the dining table. I've also got some of the plans this side, just with like the measurements and stuff. Again, he said this was really handy. And then this is like a visual picture of where I wanted the pendant light. So I've put feature pendant light on rotten beam and drawn it down here because that is the only rotten beam, but <laughs> it made sense to him. And I also did the same pictures over here. So like this one, and I wrote where I want new plug sockets and just like where each appliance is because that's handy for him to know. Sunny's in the garden, look at her right now. My mum's out there with her. My mum's doing some weeding in the garden. Look at her little face. You can see my mum behind her. Oh my God, look, she's been helping. Look at her mouth. What have you been doing? Have you been helping? Look at your my kitchen. <laughs> this is the kitchen floor that I've just mopped as well. And I've mopped the lounge floor too. And so it actually smells really nice in here now and it feels so much better. Still drying, but if we head upstairs, the electrician has also put the wiring in for the bathroom. So again, the spotlights, the feature lights, I printed off another little visual that I made on Photoshop. So I needed the wiring for this light, the wiring for the LED mirror and the wiring for under the basin, along with just the normal like ceiling lights. So yeah, he's done all that. So I did this for in here for him to work from just to show him the layout of the bathroom. And then the yellow spots are where the spotlights are going. So the bathroom, I think the electric work is actually done for in here for now anyway, until the plasterer comes in and boards the ceiling and plasters it. But we're getting there. It feels like progress. But I think that's all the updates I have for you from now. I'm gonna try and vlog as much as I can this weekend as well when I'm choosing my kitchen. Things are happening slowly but surely, but people are booked in to like come and do the next steps and stuff. So it does feel like things are finally starting to change. Where's that doodle? Oh, look at her. Are you still waiting? Hello, sweet girl with a waggy tail. These decking boards have come up, by the way, because when we were planning the extension, we had to get to this drain down here, this drain cover. Um, but I don't think this decking's actually gonna be going back down. So we haven't bothered to put the planks back. Sunny knows to go around it. As I say that, I bet she's gonna jump. You pickle, come this way. Good girl. But I think I'm actually gonna have patio where this is out to this first fence post. So yeah, that's why there's a big hole in the decking at the minute. Do you love your new garden? I'm gonna get you. What have you found? What have you found? Ready, go. It's us again. It's actually Friday evening now. I have just made myself some dinner. I had lasagna and salad tonight, it was delicious. Um, but it's half past nine now and we've got to be up early in the morning to get ourselves to Doncaster. I think it's going to be a late editing night for me tonight. So I'm going to end this vlog here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I feel like I've asked for so many different comments in this vlog. I definitely want to hear your camera opinion though. What do you guys think of this camera? Look at Sunny right now. Ooh, <laughs> they can see you dudes. But anyway, my loves, I hope you enjoyed this week's weekly vlog. Thank you very much for joining us. Do subscribe to see my future videos. Stick around, join the fam. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely week next week. And we will see you again next Sunday with another little video. Say bye guys. <laughs> Love ya.